expecting it to last through the games tonight. We'll have more on that forecast in your weekend in just a little bit. Thank you, Riley. From coast to coast, today we remember those nearly 3,000 lives lost and the countless heroes who died from health complications in the years following the September 11th attacks. Here at home, annual ceremonies across the CSRA forced to take a different approach. Celeste Springer joins us live to show us how the community is keeping the tradition this year. Celeste? Yeah, the signs that it's September 11th are all around us here in Augusta, including this flag behind me at half staff. It wasn't a typical Remembrance Day, though. With social distancing on everyone's mind, ceremonies went virtual. I mean, the challenges of not being able to uh, make contact with the people that we care about, the people that we're in the trenches with on a daily basis, uh, it is certainly different. Those challenges overcome by unique solutions with pre-recorded and live-streamed 9-11 ceremonies. <laughs> Cannon shots firing at Fort Gordon for people watching virtually to hear. Even though it has, uh, it's changed, we're still able to function and still show, you know, our respect and remembrance of, you know, what actually took place. Another virtual ceremony held in Evans. The world today versus the world then is truly a different place. But on that day, this country, without hesitation, didn't see color, didn't see race, didn't see creed. We came together. And the Augusta Fire Department pre-recorded a ceremony online. The events of this day continue to be remembered, even if it has to be done a little differently this year. I think uh, as we're battling this enemy called COVID-19, it's so reflective of the fact that there were those loved ones that we lost that we'll never see again, that we'll never touch again. And so if you missed any of those ceremonies today, they are still online. You'll be able to find links to those on our website, WRDW.com. All right, thanks so much, Celeste. Remembrances and commemorations happening around... It is something that we'll never forget. Shocking and confusing, and it all happened 19 years ago. Those who were kids then are now adults. And the kids who were born that year recently graduated high school. Brady Trapnell hears from a local student who gave her class strength in the midst of crisis. If you go to any college campus, you'll find freshmen used to marking milestones in a troubled world. At AU, you'll find an 18-year-old carrying a message of hope. Our class is different. We're not the same. You know, COVID, we're not, we're not like regular classes. Michaela Kirkpatrick isn't your typical freshman either. She was the valedictorian at Curtis Baptist School and didn't know what to say at her graduation. I was like, Mom, <laughs> you know, I worked so hard for these last 12 years to get to this point, and now it's all gone. She was like, well, listen, you know, you were born during 9-11, and now you're graduating during a pandemic. That's got to mean something. A life-changing terrorist attack, 9-11. So that's what she shared. Not a story of fear or crisis, but of courage. I'm not going to let 9-11, I'm not going to let the pandemic, I'm not going to let these situations in my life take control over me. On a solemn day and in a chaotic time, the same can be said. Fear won't take control, and we can stand together. We learn from the circumstances where everything goes wrong, and that's when we grow the most. That's when we develop whenever we're put under pressure. So if that's true... A generation born under pressure should know what it takes to withstand uncertainty. Focus on always being kind, always showing love, because you never know what could happen. After all, we're all living in a world transformed by history and a pandemic. It's up to us to carry the hope of what we've learned. Reporting in Augusta, Brady Trapnell on your side. Powerful message there, not just for the students, but for us all, really. Yeah, right. The bookends of 9-11 on one end and the pandemic on the other. Brady, thanks. It is. Right, the bookends of 9-11 on one end and the pandemic on the other. Brady, thanks. It is Friday night, and the lights are back on for high school football. For the first time this season, two Columbia County schools are meeting on the field. Nick Proto is live at Harlem High School, where the Bulldogs are getting ready to take on the Greenbrier Wolf Pack. Nick, how is the district enforcing safety measures out there? Well, Sierra, we still got a little bit of time till kickoff. They're putting the final touches on right now, but let's take a look at what they've already set up here. So you can see the masks required signs. Everybody who does come in has to wear one. We've seen that all over the place, and that's one of the many signs they've got here at Harlem. 
take a look over here. This kind of lays out exactly what you need to expect, and if you shouldn't come in, when, when to wear your face covering and where you can go when you're at the game today. And as we come over to this side, you'll see the concession stand. They are still doing limited concessions, as we said earlier. If you saw our OFL preview show on our News 12 now, they've got hand sanitizing stations right here and some, you know, the standard rules you've been seeing. Face mask required, wash your hands, and keeping a distance. So if you look on the ground, you'll see pieces of red tape spaced six feet apart leading up to the concession stand. And as we come over to the field, things look pretty much the same with just a few differences. You'll see some of the chairs on the sidelines behind the goal over there where the band could be or the cheerleaders. That's all spaced out. And then this reserved seating area by left. Normally they can sell tickets for all of these seats, but now they do have to take a two-seat space between people. So a little bit limited capacity here today. But people are already excited to get back to football. People out here, and the gates don't even open until 630. So everybody's ready to get back to it. Sierra? Yeah, Friday night under those lights. Always fun. We are looking forward to that game. Thanks, Nick. To coronavirus coverage now. Thanks, Nick. To coronavirus coverage now and new research on antibody testing. When we first learned about this test back at the height of the virus, it seems like it could be a miracle test. But as Cindy Heiberger explains, it might not be everything we expected. It was supposed to be the test that could tell us if we were immune from the virus or could save lives with our blood. But now experts say it may not be the game changer we once thought it was. When it comes to COVID antibodies. In some cases, it's great. And in some cases, it's not really as effective. There's more than meets the eye. People are only really having the antibodies for just a few months. We were once told if we had antibodies, we were safe from getting the virus again. But the CDC says precautions should always be taken, regardless if antibodies are present. We don't know how long those antibodies provide protection for. And we're still trying to find out what level of those antibodies is needed to provide protection. We also know when the test first came out, the FDA allowed virtually anyone to provide testing. They found that there was a lot of scam tests out there, tests that not only picked up this coronavirus, but all coronaviruses. Luckily, Dr. Gonzalez says there is an easy way to determine if an antibody test is legit. Most tests that are done by a finger prick are not good tests. And when it comes to using plasma on patients currently fighting the virus, Dr. Gonzalez says those results are mixed too. It really just depends upon the patient, when it's given, what is else is going on. Augusta University says out of the more than 5,000 people tested, just about 5% had antibodies. Out of 7,000 tested at Shepherd Blood Centers, 3%. None of this is to say there aren't some benefits to antibody testing. Doctors say it can be used to help diagnose post-COVID illnesses or see how far the disease has spread. Reporting in Augusta, Sydney Heiberger, on your side. Comparing Augusta's coronavirus numbers with the rest of Georgia, that is one thing AU President Dr. Brooks Keel did during a virtual town hall meeting this afternoon. Here's a clip.